I'm in here today with um, Muldoon Elder. And, uh, Muldoon is kind of famous in uh, San Francisco as an art dealer. Uh, but Tonso is one of the kind of first, well, he was the first person I think in the United States to uh, start working with Rodolfo Morales and I think uh, also Francisco Toledo. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about his experience and um, when he first kind of got to know the works of, um, of Rodolfo Morales. And we talked a little bit the other day on the phone. And I think the first time you saw Rodolfo's work was at the Mexican Museum? That's right, in, in San Francisco. Yeah. And what, what, what year was that? Uh, it, was, it was seven years before I started dealing with the work of Ben. But uh, uh, and I remember, I don't remember that it was quite an early time. So probably the early 80s, something like that, or uh, like the 70s? No, the 70s. 70s, okay, so you go that far back with it. Oh yeah, Good. I remember Frankenstein was the uh, art critic, and, and after I went to the show and, and saw that nobody took him, took, play, uh, um, um, took Rodolfo seriously, you know, as far as the values, you know, you buy something for a hundred or two hundred dollars, yeah. it was really great. Uh, 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 I, I read a Chronicle review of Frankenstein saying this guy is totally under, uh, uh, he's fabulous and, and no, no, nobody seems to know. Yeah. And I thought, well, I know, <laughs> because I had seen it. Yeah. When I, I saw his work, I fell in love with a, with a, um, with a um, gouache. Uh, and uh, I remember it was $150, and I thought, well, that's fine, you know, I, I, I mean, he's great. And I thought, you know, he's probably going to really get famous at some point. He's, he's that good, you know. He, he's primitive, but uh, he's, he's gen, you know, genuine. You know, so many painter, paints, uh, painters paint kind of fake paintings, you know, that aren't really, don't have that genuine quality to them. And, and, and then this, that. Did. I thought, well, I better. I think I, I, I never sell it. I better buy a. I better buy a, a, another oil. Uh, so I saw a, a little oil I liked, and so I got that too. And then I said to the, to the, um, to I think his name was David that was running the uh, Mexican Museum. I said, uh, listen, uh, I've, I've I've made a couple of artists world famous. You know, M. C. Escher and Yozo Hamaguchi and so forth and. And that, that nobody paid any attention to it. Uh, uh, the Dutch laughed when 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 somebody would bid more than a couple hundred dollars for an Escher <laughs> in those days. And uh, one guy in, in, uh, had an agent over in Hollywood. I mean, in in in, in Holland, uh, who who I saw uh, uh, an Escher coming up. I, so I sent my guy to bid on it, and uh, and another dealer called me. That it, it had realized that Escher was significant too, and uh, and and, and tried try to get me to admit that I knew the auction was coming up, and then he'd want to go flip. You know, we we don't bid against each other, sort uh -huh. of thing. Got and so I, I avoided that, and uh, I still remember the with, with with this Escher, it was the uh, called Reptiles. I don't know if you know it. Was, um, yeah, I know the one. Yeah, cover his book. And my 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 agent said. Uh, you know, it was listed at 200, uh, around 200 dollars for the Escher, and and I said, well, you can bid up to, up to uh, 2,000 dollars because I have a client that wants it, and uh, uh, the, the Dutch just don't know know that Escher is good as he is, uh -huh. you know, and worth worth a lot more, and and my my it's a great story because he said that that and this this goes to show how how. If somebody isn't famous, people mock the work. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so the other dealer was bidding against me, uh, and uh, and so we had to we had to spend one thousand seven hundred to to outbid this, this yeah. one other dealer. And and uh, and my agent said spending more than a couple hundred dollars would be like uh, here spending spending. Uh, a couple hundred dollars on the New York Times or something, you know. <laughs> and he said, he said people started laughing when the bids got up to three hundred. And he said, one one guy 
was laughing so hard he fell out of his chair and was rolling around, pounding the, the, the floor, laughing, you know, when he got up to $1,000. And that's typical. And, 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 and Rodolfo paintings were the same way. He, so basically you saw his works in the museum and you just kind of realized there's something special. Yeah, it was, it was a little primitive at that time, but yeah. he, he kept getting better and better, I, I think. So how did you, how did you, I mean, you saw him at the Mexican Museum, but how did you follow his career? When was the well, next time you kind of... What, what I did, what I did is I said to, to uh, David, look, you know, I, I, I'd like to expose uh, Rodolfo to the world because nobody can take him seriously and, and, and ask him if he would like me to do that. Uh, and so when I came to pick up the two paintings that I bought, uh, uh, I said to, to uh, the curator, uh, um, uh, the director of the little museum, uh, I said, you know, would he like me to, hand, you know, handle his work? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, he's not interested. <laughs> and, and I found, and so I thought, well, what the hell, you know, if he's not interested, I'm going to force myself on him. And then seven <laughs> years later, I noticed that, that I was living in New York, and I noticed that, that, um, uh, uh, Toledo bronze was coming, and uh, Toledo oil were coming up. So I went down to look at them. And was that an auction house? Uh, yeah, that was at, at Christie's. Okay. And I and uh, I saw uh, they were around ten thousand each, and I, yeah. I, I was able to buy them. Yeah. But but I saw somebody that I never heard of, and was estimated at six hundred dollars. Yeah. And I was more excited than that than in the Toledos. Yeah, got you. And, 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 and so I bought that, and, and, uh, and then the next day I'm thinking, hey, is that that same guy that, that I bought seven years ago and that, that wasn't interested in, in my showing his work? Yeah. And uh, uh, so I, I, I called the, the, um, I called the, the inventory back in San Francisco and said, did I buy, uh, and I even forgot about the oil. Yeah. I, did I buy a gouache uh, by, by a guy named Rodolfo Morales? And I came back, yeah, you did, and you also bought an oil. And I <laughs> said, well, I even forgot about that. I said, I've fallen in love twice with the same guy. Yeah. And this time, I contacted his dealer. And then I said, well, I, I still, still like to, to uh, uh, expose his, yeah, I had big gallery in, in San Francisco, big gallery in, in uh in new york and yeah. i said i like to expose it but uh i'll give him a big one-man show if, if, if uh, but i want i want to control the whole thing so i want to buy everything that every painting that's not been sold uh and uh when i have a hundred and, and all the new ones and when i have a hundred i'll give them a big exhibition yeah and uh, uh and uh, the, the, the paintings were never terribly large and uh, so I, I said to uh, what's her name again the dealer you uh, Shapiro Shapiro yeah, Shapiro. yeah. I, I, I said uh, I like to she said we can't get large canvases so I got a huge roll of, of uh, wonderful linen mm -hmm. that was six feet high uh, a roll yeah. and, and sent it, I'll send you I'll send it down and and so then he, he uh, painted three big paintings for that show that were very, very helpful. And, yeah. and uh, with the hundred paintings, uh, it, it was, it was, it was, I put on a big strip first in New York. Yeah. And I, and I said to my staff, okay, we're only gonna sell five of these. Yeah. As soon as five are sold off the market and uh, people can get a waiting list for next year. And then the, the second year, uh, and then we did a, a show in San Francisco, and then did a second year in New York, and, and tri triple the original prices, yeah. and and uh, uh, and in a fairly short time, I discovered that that uh, that he he had sort of lost his sincerity. Uh, uh, occasionally, one would come out that would be okay, but but most of them he's just grinding them out. Yeah. And so I, I said, yeah. well, I'll, I'll let life go on but yeah yeah, yeah there was that period i think when he was, he was playing really really beautifully and that's yeah. the kind of period that you were kind yeah. of working yeah with yeah and that was that was that was uh 
he's, uh, it started, I think, started somewhere in the 90s. They, they sort of lost it. Yeah, I met, I met Rodolfo probably late 80s, early 90s. And there's still some good paintings coming from Rodolfo. Uh -huh. But I think the big thing was with Rodolfo was that um, he got involved in doing a lot of um, restoration projects of colonial buildings in Oaxaca. So he was putting a lot of money into restoring old churches. Yes, and I, knew, I knew that he really got a great deal of pleasure by, by selling stuff. For, and, and he was sort of amazed that people were paying those kind yeah, of prices. Yeah. I can remember one time I was working on, um, I was working with a German film crew because I had them kind of go to Oaxaca. They met me in San Francisco and they really wanted to do a big kind of thing on Oaxacan artists. Uh -huh. But Adolfo was like one of their main men. So we went out to Adolfo's uh, house in Ocatlan, which was beautiful. The kitchen was just incredible. Uh -huh. All these beautiful pots and pans out of copper and ceramic and parrots in there. And just, uh -huh. just incredible. And then he had a big second floor and a big studio in there. And there's a studio next to that, which is actually a school room. And I looked in the door, there's like 30 kids with computers. Oh, really? So he created a school for the kids. So what I'm saying is he needed a lot of money for all these projects. Yes. So he started painting a lot of paintings all at the same time, and the quality went downhill. Yeah. Because so I went to his studio, and he was in there, and he had like, I counted them, 28 canvases going all at once. And just kind of putting yellow on this one, yellow on that one, then purple on this one, purple on that one. So they lost the integrity of those earlier paintings that you fell in love with. Yes, absolutely. But the other strange thing was, in that particular time, in Ocatlan, there'd been a big fight between uh, Rodolfo Morales' village and the next village about who owned a plot of land. Because when the Spanish left, there were, I think, 14 different villages in that area, and they, they, split, the, they split the land up between the villages, but they made, always made sure that some village overlapped another to basically divide and conquer, like keep them fighting each other. Wow. So it's about this land. And people from the other village have come in and broken into Rodolfo's house to, to, to kill him, basically. Really? Yeah. So Rodolfo had two, he had these soldiers and the bodyguards, but the, you know, the little Wach Kenyans like this time, they had these right. rifles that were kind of almost the same size as they were. <laughs> right. But he had this bodyguard it was just like, you know, a revolver here, a revolver there. Uh -huh. And you're walking around these beautiful markets and that, and you know, one of the cameras and everything, and that's what we had gardeners, but yeah. his bodyguard frightened the life out of me. I am mean, just, just looking at the guy, you know, you think, wow, yeah. I mean, he's done much with him. But, but Rodolfo was really kind of kind and passionate and kind of give a lot of money away. Yes. But the other thing, his bedroom was the tiniest room in the house. It was like absolutely tiny. He had his bed there and he slept there with like six dogs. Oh, just, a mattress, just a mattress floor on the floor. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. But so you basically created Rodolfo as a presence in the United States. Yeah. But I would imagine that kind of backlash to. He backlash to Mexico yeah. and then they said, oh my God, if the gringos are, are paying that, I guess we will too. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. And, and because uh, they, they hadn't taken him seriously. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, and I still remember that that even some of the some of the shallow ones w would go for big bucks at auction yeah. until the auction houses finally learned that there were good ones and bad ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and and some dealers too, yeah. like like uh, Marianne Martin. Uh, uh, years later, when I, I had to sell, I needed the money. I sold the the oil that I bought. She said, oh, I see, it's one of the good ones, you know. <laughs> I can remember coming into your gallery. I don't know what it was, but I think it must have been in San Francisco, late 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh -huh. And you had these Rodolfo Morales hanging, that I don't know, maybe nine foot tall. Yeah. And I've seen good Morales paintings, but more the later ones. And I saw these paintings, I was just amazed. The, yeah. the quality was just uh, absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. And then later, I actually got some paintings that you'd had once after you got divorced and yeah, you know, you yeah, saw yeah, the, I remember that. The yeah. parachute is. You got some Toledo's from it, from her too. My, did I get some Toledo's? Yeah. I don't think I don't think I got. Maybe I did. I saw them in your yeah, gallery. maybe I did. Maybe I did. Yeah, I think two. Yeah, yeah, yeah two uh, watercolor gouache types. That's what I did. I traded some paintings by Alejandro Santiago. Some big oil paintings. Uh -huh. Or some little gouache files. Yeah, because those those were great. You know, I, I got those you know years before I even um, uh, 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 
knew about with Yeah. So. Also, you, 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 obviously, you said earlier you, you've been working with Toledo before yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, for me, the great periods of Rodolfo like really start like about 1970 and finish kind of late 80s. Right. Then, well, some good ones in the 90s, but when you get to the past, the kind of 90s and into 2000, they, that's it really right. Yeah, the, the 90s, uh, uh, somewhere early in the 90s, uh, he's, that's when I, I said, I don't want to buy any more of there. He's, he's, he's uh, you know, uh, 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 the quality, I mean, the quality's not there. Yeah, it wasn't there anymore. I was, uh, and, and, and the quality was something because they maintained a primitive quality, but a deep, powerful, emotional uh, sincerity yeah. quality. Yeah. And then when, when because that's, he was being, felt, feeling that way when he painted it and it showed in the paintings. Yeah. You, I think you knew that I didn't ever start out as an art dealer. I, Started out as a painter, yeah. and uh, uh, but and, and was was uh, um, winning museum uh, purchase awards right and left, yeah. and and uh, uh, and uh, and in 1961, I when I visited a friend in San Francisco, I was complaining that that the dealer I had I discovered was selling my stuff for for. Uh, uh, three times what he told me because in those days you just gave him the painting they told you what they sold it for and, and, and you preserved. believe her yeah. <laughs> and and, and, uh, uh, and so my friend said well, why don't you start a gallery of, of your own and I said well I'm not an art dealer I'm a painter but uh, 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 then she taught, told me there's a little uh, there's a little shop that some friends of mine are going to make at uh, a restaurant, and, but the doorways are wrong. It's in the alley by City Lights Looks Bookstore. Uh -huh. This is 1961. Wow. And it's only $125 a month rent. You could sleep in the basement, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> and that's how Warple Gallery got started. And, but I was still selling my own stuff yeah, yeah. too. Uh, but I was not interested in uh, uh, particularly interested in the famous artists. Yeah, yeah. I wanted artists that I thought should be famous but weren't. Yeah. And so, you know, Escher was that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hamaguchi was that way. Um, a lo and a lot of times people didn't get it yeah. <laughs> anyway, but every now and then they, they, they did. Yeah. And uh, especially if I got a passion for yeah. it.